everyone. Uh, I am here with a really incredible, incredible uh, YouTube activist. Um, he, this is uh, NorCal Nick, and he's a writer, a producer, and a star of the NorCal Corner on YouTube. And you actually have 13 seasons, man. That's really incredible. Yeah, I, uh, I've. I do a lot of videos um, primarily from a uh, Marxist perspective on YouTube, but a lot of it is mainly political analysis and different opinions on varying issues. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you cover uh, statism, the working class, you cover a lot of things in politics, you cover a lot of stuff that has to do with history and, you know, the background and where things come from, why we're here. And, um, you, I mean, you have a lot, a lot of content, and uh, you definitely start up some interesting conversations. You have a unique perspective in, in your little corner over there. <laughs> yeah, this is where I do the, the little show, the little hole on the wall, I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah, and, you know, you have recently released a few videos, and you've been keeping track of different independent movements. Um, you've talked about the independent movement that was going on in Scotland. You've referenced um, things about stuff that's going on in Catalonia as well as Texas, and you've also covered um, your ideas and beliefs on uh, California's independence. And so, you know, what kind of sparked your interest in, in that field? I think that my interest in that field um, comes from my belief that I believe that all uh, nations basically have a right to self-determination because I've said in um, a previous video that there's a slight difference between a nation and a nation state. A nation is basically a collective of people that have a unique culture, a unique um, society, kind of different from the nation state that they currently live in, whereas a nation state is actually a sovereign entity like the US, like the UK, um, places like that. And so my interest basically came to the idea that there's a lot of um, nations out there that don't really have that respect um, or don't really gain the attention of independence um, like a lot of other nations should. And it's in fact, I was in a political science class of mine just recently, and we were discussing this, and there's about over 200 nations and nation states in the world, but there's at least 500 different nations probably throughout the entire world. And just to name a few have been like Catalonia, Scotland, California, Texas, Kurdistan. Um, so there's a lot of different nations that have not gained that independence as of yet. Yeah, and you know, what, what, what are some of the aspects or some of the traits that, that allow a state or a, a region um, or a different location in the world to have that, that, what it takes to be a nation, you know, what it takes to have that independence? What are some of those traits and qualities? I think that to, in order to have that independence, um, you have to first of all have this strong drive um, to want it, but you definitely have to uh, have a very unique culture. You have, to, um, for instance, with California, we are very distinct from the rest of the United States in the way that we speak, the way that, you know, the, the foods that we eat and the, the cuisine that we have, the um, amount of diversity just in one, um, one state alone, and I think a lot of those happen to be a lot of aspects that really propel differences in opinion, and as well as a lot of those other things, we have a vastly different political opinion than the rest of the U.S. Absolutely, yeah, and you know, in your videos you cover that California does have these really interesting subcultures, the fact that we are eighth, the eighth largest economy in the entire world. Uh, we have a different type of dialect. We communicate differently. There's that like Cali slang, you know. Um, the the di diversity is just explosive, and the fact that we we have so much love for the other, or love for people that you know are completely misunderstood and misrepresented in other places in the nation. 
And so, you know, and even our representatives understand these differences and talk about it. So what do you think it, it's going to take for Californians to really understand what their identity and what they're representing? Um, I think a lot of cultural awareness really would help. A lot of um, a lot of what Yes California seems to be doing is a, this uh, great amount of activism, which I've never seen before. And it's I think by getting the word out to a lot of Californians and explaining to them that we are very unique from the United States, that we do have this unique culture, subcultures, and this national identity that really I think it just takes a lot of awareness and a lot of activism and a I think a drive for self-determination. And what have you seen in some of the other movements um, around the world in their fight for independence? Um, have you seen any successes? Have you seen anything actually go through um, in, a, in a way that They've, they've received what they, they've been wanting, you know? I think on a, on a um, smaller example, um, something that we saw in uh, Kosovo back in about, I believe it was 2008, was a tremendous victory for even a small nation to gain independence from a much larger nation, which was at the time Serbia. And um, I think it was the fact that the, um, the Kosovoans had this large amount of uh, drive for that they had and they there was a lot of te ethnic tensions between them and the Serbs and um, I think that propelled them to want to gain their independence and though it wasn't recognized by certain states um, today it's actually recognized by a grander scheme of, of uh, nation states than it previously was and another example I would actually go with Scotland because even though Scotland has not yet gained its independence there has been a uh, the there's actually been a large push now for another referendum because I've actually spoken with a couple of uh, individuals from Scotland and they actually have said that if they could go back and redo that all over again the number would have probably been higher in favor of independence than it w was in uh, September of 2014. I see. So it's it has to do with the timing thing. You know, it has to do with people's understanding of the issues. And, um, you know, how did you yourself get involved or, or tap into Yes California? How did you find out about that group? It was actually quite interesting because I... Uh, I have always been this big independent supporter of California. I've always had this thought and this uh, this idea for an independent California nation. And when I came across Yes California, it was somewhat by accident. I was I think I was on Twitter or something like that at the time, and I had come across uh, something about California independence, and it said Yes California, and I started scrolling through it, I went to their website and started looking through that and I'm like, you know, these people actually have a lot of ideas that are very um, similar to my own. And that, so it's one of those things that propelled me to want to at least get involved and support the organization. So that's really where that kind of came along. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes, you know, our, our interests and our ideas will kind of drive us to those to those different groups or those different organizations. But, you know, from from what I've seen in just in working with Yes California and just becoming more experienced, you know, people have these ideas. They have these feelings. They just don't know it's out there. They don't know it exists. They don't know that other people are on the same page, you know. So it's really about continuing the conversation and um, allowing this this kind of debate or this conversation to grow and expand and so thank you so much for you know taking the time out and um, being here to talk about it I we really appreciate no it <laughs> yeah definitely so what's what can we look forward to with Nor NorCal Nick y your work is really really awesome man um, I, I think it has a lot of potential um, and yeah what what can we see come out of that 
Well, um, right now I'm actually working on quite a few things. Um, I'm one of the things that I'm thinking about doing is um, actually doing bits and pieces of history because I'm a bit of a history buff on certain topics, and there's things that I would like to research and cover on that, maybe to kind of educate people on certain things, maybe even throw in histories about Cal uh, the history of California and. Uh, as if I haven't talked enough about that already, um, but I've uh, I'm thinking about doing something like that. I've um, there's uh, things that I want to get back on where I do want to talk primarily on independence movements such as uh, Scotland, such as California a little bit more, and um, just in general I just like doing current events. So whatever ends up popping up in the news, just ends up usually being part of my show. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and you know it's what's so interesting uh, with these independent movements, I mean, 30 years ago this was not a conversation. And mm -hmm. you know, this was not happening. You know, I mean, even 15 years ago, 10 years ago, this, this wasn't something that was in the mainstream or even a part of, you know, that collective a conversation or narrative within you know California or the nation or even on the world stage so what do you think what what are some of the factors that have like pushed this to the forefront of the conversation I think it had uh, you mentioned something about time uh, earlier and I think uh, and I remember um, uh, Marcos uh, Evans Louise I think he had um, I think he had actually mentioned something about how time just over it just seems like a after a certain amount of time we just reach a point where it's time to have a discussion um, he mentioned something in a previous interview about uh, how Governor Schwarzenegger had mentioned that California was a, a nation that Jerry Brown had mentioned that it was a nation and that um, in quoting Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, it's it may not be it may not personally right now be the time for the actual thing to happen, but it's definitely time for discussion. And and this right now, we have reached a point where we need to discuss California independence, and we need to raise awareness. And I think time, awareness, and just the general uh, feel, feeling from Californians towards their the U.S. government right now, I think that that's going to actually propel us towards wanting independence. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the the state of the nation, it's it's not in good standing with the American people as well as on the world and the global stage. It's it's really heartbreaking to see something that I mean, you know, America was based on it it has a murky past, a murky history. You know, people yes. that are aware of what what's gone down in this nation, you know, you are all well aware of these issues, you know, but it's gotten to a point where it's almost unmanageable. It's it's to the point where it's it's not functioning anymore, you know? And so exactly. so we need to work our way to something, some type of solution, some type of understanding to where we can get policies passed, we can, you know, allow our communities to become healthier and really, you know, push forward into the future um, in, in a healthy way, in a sustainable way. And I, I truly don't see that coming from, you know, having relations with America um, as a whole. And I'm not sure of your opinions on that, if you want to, you know, share, sh share some of your insight. No, no, you're absolutely right. The, um, the way that the American system has uh, really been lately is just um, does not seem like it's functioning. And I mean, in a world where Donald Trump and Ben Carson are the Republican front runners, that really says a lot for American politics and everything else. And while I think that personally Bernie Sanders might be able to provide something for um, American reform and stuff like that. I don't really think that what he's going to do is going to really help in for California. I think by this point Californians are just are absolutely done and I think we are prepared for an alternative. And in the case of Bernie Sanders one of the things I would like to point out is the fact that 
He recently said that he would stand with President Obama's idea of keeping 5,500 troops uh, in the Middle East, uh, in particularly Afghanistan. And uh, so he's basically continuing this policy of U.S. imperialism. And I think Americans are just tired of our troops being involved in wars, especially over in the Middle East. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, this our society is so, so much of it is based in this military ideology and whether we know it or not whether we're conscious of it or not um that's you know one of the biggest things when we're talking about california's independence people's automatic immediate reaction is what if there's a military takeover what if our government turns on us and you know that there's troops in the streets and i mean that that's a that is a valid reaction because guess what there's military tanks in Florida right now, in the streets of Florida. So we're seeing our military, you know, come back into into the American land um, and really have an influence here. I don't truly foresee that happening. Um, that is definitely people's, you know, first reactions when they hear about this idea of independence. And, you know, um, like you were saying, let's try to go about it in the most democratic fashion let's take a vote you know right, let's let's go at it peacefully um you know and and the only thing we can do is see what happens you know no one can truly foresee um the future and things of that nature but um you know it it goes back to our our infrastructure is crumbling our education system is failing you know our farmers are not getting the resources they need and you actually point out that California's economy is based on entertainment the tech industry and agriculture and you know that it seems like uh, the our economy is not being supported fully in the ways that it could be you know and so it comes back to you know how we as Californians can make sure that California can be a healthy and functional place in all of our different industries and um, and so that that's really what it, the independence movement is about it's about you know creating a healthy and sustainable future and um, I, I just really I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out to speak on these things and give us your your insight no problem <laughs> yeah thank you very much man